During Generation 2, Hasbro was trying a lot of new things. One thing specifically that they did was make a new line of Hot Wheels style Transformers called GoBots. Ah! So yeah, they were Hot Wheels type Transformers that transformed in roughly three steps. See, this is the era where Hasbro was like, let's do every other toy fad, but it transforms. Genius! Yeah, sure, G1 did it a little bit with Micro Masters and Action Masters gimmicks, but my god, did G2 take everything. But as G2 wasn't as successful, there were many figures, including some of the previously mentioned GoBots, that were canceled. So it's a damn good job that R.I.D. pulled most of the molds out and renamed them Spy Changers. Lucky you, because I'm about to review all of them. Oh, oh wait, sorry. Um, I'm going to review all but, like, three of them. Shut up, David. Let's do this. First up is Rev. So yeah, this is Rev. As you can see, he's a Lamborghini Diablo, like Prowl from R.I.D. At least here it makes more sense because it's not a police car. What doesn't make sense is this Firebird looking ass decal on the front, on a supercar. Sure. I mean, what is it with them putting weird decals on foreign sports cars like they're muscle? I mean, it's like putting flames on an Audi. Oh wait. As a Hot Wheels style car, yes, he rolls pretty good. And he's pretty well detailed for what he is. Transformation is pretty cut and dry among all of these, with a few exceptions that we'll get into in a minute. Robot mode is pretty simple, but I like it. They were little pocket money toys back then, and I really think you got what you paid for. Articulation is simple for the time as expected, but detailing is also simple. Yes, there's not much to these things, but I'm ranking them on uniqueness and quirkiness, not just what they do. Wait. Did I not tell him yet that I was going to rank them? D David, we got to tell him these things. Oh yeah, that reminds me. These guys all come with little guns to arm themselves with. Overall, Rev's fine. I like him. Alright, next up is Wars. What the hell is that name? So according to my friend Snail, Wars stands for Wicked Attack Recon Sports Car. God. So yeah, he's a NASCAR style stock car. That for some reason has kanji on it. Why? More specifically, he's a Ford Thunderbird style stock car, which is cool. Detailing wise, he's just fine. He's got all the stock car type detail. Plus he's got his name on the side. How pretentious. Think that's not enough for you? How about the fact that the kanji on his hood says war? Why? Uh, I don't care anymore. He rolls just as good as Rev does. Robot mode is fine. Really enjoy it, honestly. I'm kind of actually nostalgic for it because I owned the repaint of this when I was a kid called Camshaft. Honestly, it made more sense as a stock car than Wars, but Wars is fine. And yes, he has a little gun too. So now we're moving on to Ironhide. Finally, a normal name. He's also the first one that isn't a car. Here we have a pickup truck, an F-150 to be exact, with cow print on it and a big old bull on the front. Now you're probably waiting on me to say that this is stupid. Well, you're wrong. My first vehicle was a truck, and if it looked like this, I would still drive it. Only thing it's missing is the bull horns. He transforms exactly the same as the rest, except he's got a bigger chest because truck. I honestly really like how this robot mode looks and works. I mean, the yellow works really well with the black and white for some reason for me. Only problem is he can't stand worth a damn because of how big his chest is. And the head sculpt is actually really similar to how Wars is, but he's gained favor with me because his name and design actually make sense, Wars. His articulation's the same as the rest, and he takes the little gun. I really like Ironhide. Now, Crosswise is cool. Car mode is... A Hot Wheels car. Yeah, way to be super on the nose, Hasbro. Tail wise, he's pretty well loaded up. He's got nice wheels, a greenish blue tint to his translucent plastic, which is a little bit concerning, and he's also got some orange stripes here and there. On the roof, you'll see an Autobot logo as well as molded in engine detail on the back. And lastly, on the hood, you'll see an X so big it'll give any Twitter urchin a heart attack. No shock here, transformation is just like the rest of them. Sweet shit, this gets repetitive. But hey, the robot mode's cool, and it's actually a lot lankier than the rest of them. Hooray for diversity! 
And actually, this is one of the main holdovers from G2 that made the cut. This was High Beam and Bumblebee. Which is the first true instance of Bumblebee being a sports car. Babers wasn't the first, but he's still the best. Ha! And just like the rest, he's got a gang molded gun that's in translucent plastic. Crosswise is cool. I like him. And of the guys of the show, we're gonna save the most unique for last in Mirage. Did I say unique? Oh, wait, sorry. I meant exactly the same as every other Mirage ever. With two exceptions, of course. The F1 mode is cool, well detailed. The deco is pretty well Mirage, except mine does have a little scratch from play. And it also does say Transformers on a spoiler for some reason. I mean, yeah, sure, I could see these getting mixed up with your other small car toys, but why start now? You didn't do it on the rest of them. Transformation is basically just the same as the rest of them. And robot mode, he looks a lot like Skid Z as well as Machine Wars Mirage, which I'm sure that's what they were going for. And like the rest of them, he has a molded gun and can hold one like so. Overall, he's pretty cool. Now, naturally, I didn't get the coolest, which is Hot Shot, but I'm just not gonna think about it and move on. Now we're breaking into characters just made for the toy line. Case in point, Sideburr, I, I mean Jazz. As you can see, he's the Dodge Viper made famous by Sideburn. I don't know, because it is Sideburn? Yeah, this thing might be a repaint, but it's all the better for it because it looks awesome in Jazz colors. I mean, right down to the stripes on top. It's, it's fantastic. Sixth verse, same as the first, and we get to robot mode. Robot mode is actually fairly simple with, believe it or not, gun storage underneath. Arm moves, gun in the hand. He's definitely getting a higher rating from me due to the fact that this is the first G1 style jazz we'd seen in a long time. And no, I don't want to hear it. I know I wasn't actually there. Next up is Daytonis. I like Daytonis. He's very unique. First off, the color scheme is neato, as well as the fact that he's a freaking Le Mans car. That's unique because there's not really that many in Transformers. I got to talk about the name for a minute, though. It's not stupid by any means, but the use of it is. Considering the fact that Daytonis is derived from Daytona, that's a NASCAR racing location, and I just realized I don't care. Robot mode ends up being more distinct entirely because of the color and how the Le Mans car shapes it. But the head sculpt comes off as a little bit similar to the rest of them. Articulation like the rest, gun in hand. I like old Tony, probably one of my favorites. Next up, side swipe. I gotta tell you, this is probably the most unique out of all of these figures. Starting with the vehicle, it's a 1993 to 2004 type Camaro. Yes, it's a Camaro Transformer that's not Bumblebee. Believe it or not, it was intended in G2 to be Rumble, which is even weirder. But this Camaro is actually something special. It's Drag Modify. That's awesome. Seriously, when was the last time we've ever seen a drag-specific race car in Transformers? But as you look around, you can see specific details such as an exposed blower on top, slanted aerodynamics due to the wheels, and molded-in parachute packs on the back. That's so cool! Robot mode is different from a normal sideswipe considering that he's green, black, and has goggles, but I like him. He still looks really unique for what he is. However, I will say the orange on the legs does throw it off a bit. Overall, he's probably the most unique out of all the spy changers. I really like him. He's cool. And now we find ourselves at Prowl 2. Oh my god. As usual for a Prowl, he's a police car, albeit differently colored than most Prowls, because he's not like most Prowls, but it's a nice police car nonetheless, and he's detailed just fine. Robot mode is just what you'd expect from every other spy changer. Gun in the hand, standard articulation, generally harmless, and I also wanted to throw in that this guy came in a two-pack with Sideswipe, but nobody cares about that. Instead, people are wondering why the hell this thing is called Prowl 2. Basically something about how him and a version of Wheeljack journeyed from the Vinyl Tech universe to grab some Energon because they were out, but at some point he died and his memories got left in this beta machine thing, whatever that is, that they used to go back, and they took the memories from that Prowl, from that universe, that he had already died for some reason and mixed it with this Prowl, and now you get Prowl 2, but then they had to shrink his body because they were out of Energon, and x Brom blew up the reserves, and Daytonis laughs because the Decepticons are assholes, and somehow Kiss Players falls into this. You know what? No. No more. 
This is already too complex without mentioning KISS players. Screw this. Screw it. If anyone has a problem with this rating, they can kiss my ass. Next! In the final stretch, we get to look at a couple special ones. One of those being the R.I.D. exclusive Spy Changer Optimus Prime based on his bigger counterpart. There is a canon reason why he's small, and it's really interesting. And at least it makes sense, Prowl 2. This fire truck is actually very faithful to the big guy, down to the latter even being somewhat functional. Don't talk to me or my smaller son ever, ever again. Reaching this guy, I can finally demonstrate a different transformation. Don't worry, it's still simple. In robot mode, he looks like a little junior version of the super mode in the big version which is cute. You can even arm him with the ladder weapon. So he is more or less a watered down version of the big guy, which I think is a good thing to accomplish. Overall, this one is fun. And if you get the female version that's yellow, it's even more neat. Just didn't know being a Sam's Club exclusive made you a different gender. Rounding off is a special one to me. My last remaining spy changer is Optimus Prime. Yep, it's another one. This here is what I like to call Scourge Prime. Which, all I mean by that is that it's a Optimus repaint of a Scourge toy, and it works. In fact, it works so well, they repainted it for the 2007 movie. Neato. Transformation is once again different, so I can show him off. Robot mode is just a mini Scourge in Prime colors, and it's honestly really cute. It's like Laser Prime has a little son, which is even more fitting because he doesn't have weapons, so he's free to just stand with his papa. Which is even more fitting when you realize my dad is the one who gave me this when I was a youngin'. So yeah, for nostalgia's sake, this guy gets a high rating. Mainly for bias reasons, but I don't care. So yeah, that's it. That's all the spy changers I own. Now, barring ratings, which one is my favorite? It's definitely a tie between Crosswise, Daytonis, Ironhide, and Sideswipe. But even of that group, I gotta narrow it down to Sideswipe. I mean, he's just so unique in my eyes. His vehicle mode is different, even though it's a Camaro. He's still really different compared to Bumblebee, and his robot mode is just so different, and he's great for that. But you know what? To hell with what I think. Let me know in the comments what you think. Who's your favorite spy changer? It might not even be one I have. There's, what, three or four that I don't have still? So let me know in the comments. That has been my look at spy changers. I am Treebot Reviews. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and I'll see you on the next one. Keep growing your collections.